In just three years, the Formula Opel Euro Series had established itself as a crucial step on the long road to Formula One. The 1991 championship would see the cream of the world's young racing talent chasing their dreams in identical cars across 15 races, eight of them supporting Formula One Grand Prix. Portugal's emergence into world motorsport was heralded by the presence of Pedro Lamy and Diogo Castro Santos on the front row of the starting grid for the season opener at Hockenheim. They dominated the race as they had qualifying, finishing first and second. The Portuguese rivalry resumed at Imola. Pedro Lamy's chances looked to have taken a dive with a slow start. His fortunes were saved by accidents among the front runners. These allowed him a clear run at Castro Santos and Lamy pressured his countryman into a spin only to then fall victim himself to an unforced error while lapping a back marker, leaving Jalmo Fogaccia of Brazil a surprised winner. Poor getaway by Lamy at Zolder left Swede Michael Johansson in the lead, followed by Irishman Jonathan McGall and Shinji Nakano of Japan. As rain began to fall, McGall exploited Johansson's caution to take the lead and the victory. Four at Zandvoort and more trouble with the start. Diogo Castro Santos and Bruno Aguirre of Brazil both penalized a minute for jumping the lights. While Johansson had to take to the grass after an aborted move for second on Switzerland's David Loyer, Lamy cruised to victory number three. Oh, Lamy had triumphed again in mixed conditions in Austria, but in Sweden it was the turn of 21-year-old Bruno Aguirre to head the field in only his 10th single-seater race. Rather generously, he shared his champagne with Lamy and Castro Santos. A huge French Grand Prix crowd welcomed the Euro Series to Manicourt. Lamy outdragged Polsit and Nakano to establish a secure lead. His fourth, and as it turned out, final win of the season, giving him a commanding advantage as the championship reached the halfway mark. For the second year in a row, Diogo Castro Santos claimed pole for the British Grand Prix support race at Silverstone. But it was Jonathan McGall who grabbed the advantage on lap one. And he led Castro Santos and Britain's Gareth Rees to the flag. <laughs> Tennis superstar Steffi Graf was soaking up the atmosphere in Germany. Irishman McGall was in form again at Hockenheim and he soon overtook surprise leader Gualta Salas of Brazil. As chaos erupted at the chicane on lap two, McGall stretched his lead, hauling himself firmly into championship contention. <laughs> Hungary was the venue for Formula Opel's first visit to Eastern Europe. Diogo Castro Santos stepping up his title challenge with a convincing debut Euro Series win ahead of championship leader Lamy. And McGall, the winner of the previous two rounds, put himself out of the reckoning with this incident, his run of success at an end. Euro 
series arrived in Belgium, the pressure was beginning to mount on Pedro Lamy. Defending his first place from Michael Johansson at the fearsome Eau Rouge corner, the Portuguese ran wide and suffered a major accident. Mercifully, only his car and pride were dented, and Lamy walked back to the pits as Johansson and Castro Santos eroded his lead by finishing first and second. Lamy adopted a more circumspect approach for round 12 at the Nürburgring, putting points before pride, letting Johansson slip by into the lead rather than risk another collision. Castro Santos was next up to have a go, only to collide with Lamy and retire on the spot, while his rival continued to finish second. Johansson's second win in a row put him firmly into the title race and delighted his Swedish Tommy Jägerwall team. Estoril in Portugal, and the stage was set for an epic battle between the championship rivals. Castro Santos was on pole, Lamy alongside, and the on-form Johansson in third, ready to exploit any indiscretion by the local heroes. A missed gear at the start saw Lamy left behind. Castro Santos and Johansson took up the running, but the points leader fought his way back to third place. With two races to go, 17 points separated the top three in the title chase as they mounted the podium. Barcelona was the scene of a two-heat race. The results of both parts added together to decide the overall result. Having won part one, Johansson led Santos and Lamy at the start of a wet second heat. But Santos slithered by into the lead as Johansson struggled, falling back into the clutches of Lamy and then Reese. The real star of the show was Canada's Christian Van Dahl. Starting last after retiring from the first heat, the lone runner on slick tyres overtook 24 cars to lead at the flag. But on aggregate, it was Castro Santos who took the overall win. The Euro Series crown would once again be decided at the final race. British Formula Vauxhall champion Kelvin Burt led from pole position to the flag at Donington Park, but he was ineligible for Euro Series points. Behind him, Castro Santos' hopes were dealt a major blow as he spun down the order. Lamy knew that as long as his rival was behind him on the racetrack, the championship title would be his. Collisions among the front runners aided Diogo Castro Santos in his fight back up the field. But in the end, the best he could manage was 10th, and that simply wasn't enough. Third place at the chequered flag meant that Pedro Lamy had clinched his championship title, Draco Racing's second in two seasons. Well, 91, I, I changed the team and uh, I had the better car, and I was always uh, in the front. Um, row in the first places and was fantastic because it uh, was very competitive and all the races were very difficult but I, I had more experience I did the first year uh, to get some experience and to, to know the car and the second year was, was, was very good for me.
join us next time for a look back at the 1992 Euro Series and the best of the action from this year's Formula Opel European Union Championship. The magnificent Spa-Francorchamps is the setting for an exciting double header.